Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today's video will be my birthday unboxing. So hey, what's up? How are you? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great <laughs> because so many of you wonderful humans have sent me birthday gifts. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think I have like 12 packages here, which is incredible. And I'm just so excited to open them with you all. So let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it because I've been staring at these for about a month now, just waiting, waiting to actually open them. <laughs> let's open a bag first, just, just because. Let's just see. So this one is from, aw, from Molly. It says, happy birthday, bestie. Oh my God, I miss you so much at hers. I hope you have the best day and get endlessly spoiled. I love you the most from Molly. Molly, I love you so much. It's really cute because I think last year I opened your gift first as well. On accident, maybe? I don't know, it's meant to be. Um, Molly sent me His and Hers by Alice Feeney. Um, I recently just read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney and absolutely loved it. So I put the rest of, or most of her works on my wish list because, you know, I mean, I gotta go through a discography, so to say, and I am excited. I'm excited about it. I loved her writing and I'm excited to try out another one of her books. Thank you so much, Molly. Let's go for another bag. <gasps> Who did this? Ah, this one's from Steph. <laughs> so Steph said, happy birthday. I hope it's a wonderful year full of amazing adventure from Steph. <laughs> In parentheses, an e-bookish. <laughs> Thank you. Steph chose The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. This is the first book of the Dream Blood. I think it's duology. And I just, I, I think I love duologies more than I love any other sort of series because I feel like the pacing in a duology is just unmatched. Like we all know that it's not going to be finished in the first book, but what we, what we know what's going to be finished in the second one. So each of them are pretty much just like jam-packed, pretty, pretty action-filled the entire time. And I'm excited. I still have yet to read the fifth season trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, but I obviously really want to read it. And I have heard nothing but great things about just her work in general. So I saw this book and thought it was stunning. And I really just want to read it. I really just want to read it. So thank you so much, Steph. I'm super excited about this. Okay, let's open this one because I already kind of opened it because it's from one of my patrons. And she said that if she didn't buy me a birthday present at that specific moment, she probably would have forgotten. She just sent it to me early. And she did send it in a cute little cute little present gift bag. And it is from Heather and she said, happy birthday, Sydney. Not sure if you've read this, but it was super beautiful. So, oh, she sent me two books. So one of them was off my wish list, and then she added another one to her like cart and then sent me both of them because she's amazing. The one that she wasn't sure if I read was Blanca Roja, Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. Um, I actually am reading Mirror Season this next month by Anna Marie McLemore, which is very exciting. So I haven't read from her yet, but I have heard that she is very beautiful, like lyrical writing, I think. So in this one, we have two sisters, Blanca as obedient and, gr and graceful as Roja is vicious and manipulative. They know that because of a generous old spell, their family is bound to a bevy of swans deep in the woods. They know that one day the swans will pull them into a dangerous game that will leave one of them a girl and trap the other in a body of a swan. Ooh, but when two local boys become drawn into the game, the swan spell intertwines with the strange and unpredictable magic lacing the woods, and all four of their fates depend on facing truths that could either save or destroy them. That sounds super interesting. I haven't even heard of this book, and oh my god, there's a swan right here. I didn't even see it. There's a, there's a swan. I think that that sounds really interesting. Thank you so much, Heather, for thinking of me outside of my own wish list. That's amazing. <laughs> and then the other one she sent me was Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I, I think I think Heather said that she read this and that it was really, really, really spooky for her. Um, I think that it sounds really, really cool. It's like, I mean, it looks exactly like an Ikea, you know, catalog, and I have no idea what to expect. I know that it is, I mean, it's a it's a horror book. You could see the, like, the person behind the, the frames, and I don't know, supposedly it's really spooky. Oh, so it's really nice looking on the front, and on the back it's, like, kind of decrepit. Um, yeah. Ah! I don't know. Okay, I'm excited. Thank you so much for buying me two books. You're incredible. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Let's do another box. Oh, this one's been on my wish list for like over a year. 
Oh, it's from Darian. Darian said, happy birthday, Sid. I'm so grateful to know you. Your friendship means so much to me and I couldn't love you more. I hope your birthday is as magical as you are because you deserve it. I love you from Darian. I love you. Thank you so much. The book she chose was All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This, like I said, has been on my wish list for like ever. This is the story of George Matthew Johnson. This is a story for us all. In his groundbreaking young adult memoir, prominent writer and LGBTQIA plus activist George M. Johnson shares both glorious and gut-wrenching memories of growing up black and queer in America. From getting bullied at age five to visiting flea markets with his loving grandmother to the thrilling frontiers of first relationships, Johnson's early life is a profound tapestry of everyday experiences. Most central to Johnson's journey is how to reconcile his blackness and his queerness, identities that are sometimes at odds in his story. The answer is a reassuring testimony for queer men of color. They are equal parts to a whole and perfectly designed person. I know some people who've read this book and said that it was absolutely amazing, so thank you so so, so much for choosing this for me. I'm really excited to have it on my shelf now and pick it up. Oh no. <laughs> okay, I put this on my wish list because I was never going to buy it for myself. And I just know that if I ever did like a subscribers made me read it or something, type type video, I think that someone would choose this. It's a very polarizing book. I know a lot of people either love it or they hate it, and I don't know which one I would be part of. I don't know what side I'd be on. But it was sent to me from Christine, who said, happy birthday, you are completely awesome. Thanks for all the great content. I hope this is the best birthday ever. Oh, thank you so much, you're an angel. And Christine sent me The Silent Patient by Alex Michelades. I read The Maidens by the same author, and I thought that it was good. I thought it was okay. I ended up giving it like a three, a three and a half out of five, which like isn't a bad rating. Um, I really loved the atmosphere that Alex wrote in The Maidens, um, but the overall, you know, twists and reveals in that book didn't really surprise me. Um, so therefore my reading experience wasn't as great as I would want it to be. But I'm hoping that maybe that's different in this one because I didn't, I didn't not like his writing. So hopefully maybe him writing a different story, I would like a little bit more. So that's, uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh my God, there's two in here. Stop, 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 stop. I'm gonna cry. I'm, I'm literally gonna cry. I don't know why this note in particular made me like emotional, um, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Riley and she said, thanks for being you. Your little corner of the internet is one of my faves. I'm literally tearing up. I can't handle it. I don't deserve you guys. Thank you so much, Riley. Wow, 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 wow. Stop, Sydney, stop. <laughs> okay, this is the cutest book ever. What? I love it. Um, she chose two books. This one is Things Have Gotten Worse Since the Last Time We Spoke by Eric LaRocca. Um, I've seen this book in so many, so many different places. I know not much about it other than the fact that it's kind of weird, a little bit dark, and I just love the cover. I absolutely love this cover so much. Um, I know it's a little bit weird, and I love it for that. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> it says, sadomasochism, obsession, death. A whirlpool of darkness churns at the heart of a macabre ballet between two lonely young women in an internet chat room in the early 2000s. A darkness that threatens to forever transform them once they finally succumb to their most horrific desires. What have you done today to deserve your eyes? What? <laughs> what? I'm sweating. I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> I just went through so many emotions in the last 30 seconds. Oh my God, I am so into this. <gasps> I wanna redo my December TBR. I want this on there. Can I put this on there? I love this. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, the other one that she chose, which is absolutely incredible as well, is Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. This is a, another edition in the Wayward Children's series, which is one of my favorites. I love this series a lot. The Wayward Children's series, in it we basically follow a kid or a set of children who find doorways to other worlds. And in these worlds, these kids feel like they're at home. However, something happened in their world and they actually got kicked out and they're back into the real world. And their parents don't really know what to do with them, so they are sent to Eleanor West's home for wayward 
wayward children. And basically they're living there trying to find their way back to their home, find their doorway again. And sometimes in the stories we are following the children actually going into their worlds and seeing what it's like in their like perfect home. And other times we're following them when they're like trying to find their doorway again. You don't have to read them in order. They're all kind of stand alone in and of themselves. This is, this is, this is great. Thank you so much. I'm having a great time. <laughs> Let's go for this one. This one is from Emily. She said, happy birthday, girlie. I hope you have an amazing birthday month. Thank you so much for creating amazing content and a safe space for all your bookworms. Oh, oh, stop. I'm gonna cry again. I'm an emotional hoe, okay? This is ridiculous. Okay, wow. This font is so tiny. I kind of like small font though. I really like that. Um, okay, but Emily chose The Song Rising by Samantha Shannon. This is book three in the Bone Season series. I love this series. I have only read the novella and the Bone Season. I'm very excited to continue. And I love having further editions or installments, I mean, in the series because once I sink my claws into the series, I really like to really read read the series through. So this is exciting. Thank you so much. I'm excited to have this on my shelf so when I am neck deep in the series, I can just go right into this one. Thank you. Let's go for another box. Aw, whenever someone chooses to gift wrap it, it just makes me so happy. Ooh, it feels like a really cute small one. Ah, it's from Erin. <laughs> she said, girl, happy birthday, and also buying a house is hard, so enjoy some stressed chocolate, and in honor of us, maybe trying another king book. Here's my favorite, oh no. <laughs> Aaron is one of my patrons over on my Patreon channel. And last month in October, we read Misery by Stephen King as, as our buddy read pick. And I did not really like it. I didn't like it. But apparently she chose to get me... What Stephen King book is small? The Outsider? Oh my God, it's a graphic... Wait. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm really confused. Okay. Okay, wait, Aaron. <laughs> So it's The Outsider by Stephen King, but it, I mean, the bend is, it's, it is what it is. That's just what happens in shipping. But The Outsider isn't this long. Okay. <laughs> I have The Outsider downstairs, like the actual book, which is awesome knowing that it's your favorite because that makes me want to read it more. But <laughs> I think Amazon either messed up or something because this is like a notebook. It's literally like a blank notebook. And then I saw this back cover and I was like, oh, maybe it's a graphic novel. No, it's a note notebook. I don't know what to do. <laughs> the sentiment is there. Erin, I love you. And I, just for you, will put The Outsider either in one of our book club choices or I will try to just read it. Thank you. <laughs> I feel the love. Let's go on to this one. Who did this? Okay, first of all, there's a full bag of chocolate. Um, a winter assortment of chocolate. Hello, milk chocolate truffles. Milk fudge swirl, milk with white. Hello. Wow, wow, wow. <sighs> oh my God, wait, this is from Erin too. So when she said, enjoy some stress chocolate, this is the chocolate that she's referring to. Wow, I'm glad I opened this one right after. And oh my God, she also, Erin, you are entirely too much. Entirely. She sent me this little like joined collection of two of Sally Rooney's books, Normal People and Conversations with Friends. Thank you so much, wow. These are just really pretty on a shelf. Really, really, really cute. I love this sardine cover. I love it. And that there are two people hugging, making out, kissing sleeping together in the sardine canister. Wow, amazing, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, my camera's probably gonna die soon. Before I open this, let me change my battery, hold on. All right, we're back in action and we're gonna open this one. Am I not centered anymore? I don't know what's happening, this is fine. Oh my God, y'all are just sending like multiple books in every bag, entirely too much, like entirely. My heart is, <sighs> my heart is exploding. It got like way too big for my throat just then. <laughs> I started choking. <gasps> Stop. I get like astonished, like I didn't put these on my wish list or something. Casey. Casey, Casey, Casey. These are from Casey. <laughs> and it says, local woman missing. 
is one of my favorite thrillers. I hope you love it like I do. Happy birthday. I'm so lucky to know you from Casey. Casey, I love you. I'm my, like, I'm having trouble breathing. <laughs> so this local woman missing, I know Kayla from Books and Lala just recently read it and I'm pretty sure she really liked it. I watched one of her vlogs recently and I just like added every book that she really <laughs> liked to my wish list, and this is one of them. Um, I'm always looking for some thriller that is really well spoken about because thrillers are a genre that I don't read enough of and a genre that kind of scares me just because most of them are like a hit or miss, you know what I'm saying? So this one is Shelby is the first to go missing, then Meredith and her six-year-old daughter. Delilah vanished just blocks away from where Shelby was last seen, striking fear into their once peaceful community. After an elusive search that yields more questions than answers, the case eventually goes cold. Now, 11 years later, Delilah shockingly returns. Everyone wants to know what happened to her, but no one is prepared for what they'll find. And some people will stop at nothing to keep the truth buried. Very cool. Wow. And it's a great paperback. Gotta love it. And Casey, you're too much. She said, Sid, I know you're a Scorpio, but I don't know when your birthday is, so I figured I'd get ahead of the game and send these gifts early. Happy birthday, you sweet pea. I love you so much. From Casey, I love you. She sent me a dowry of blood by S.T. Gibson. This one I've just seen Jan talk about like endlessly. I know that she loves this book a lot. I didn't know that Casey read this. If Casey read this and liked it, then oh my God, I'm even more excited. So this one is a lyrical and dreamy reimagining of Dracula's Brides. A Dowry of Blood is a story of desire, obsession, and emancipation. Saved from the brink of death by a mysterious stranger, Constanta is transformed from a me medieval peasant into a bride fit for an undying king. But when Dracula draws a cunning aristocrat and a starving artist, into his web of passion and deceit, Constanta realizes that her beloved is capable of terrible things. Finding comfort in the arms of her rival consorts, she begins to unravel their husband's dark secrets. With the lives of everyone she loves on the line, Constanta will have to choose between her own freedom and her love for her husband, but bonds forged by blood can only be broken by death. I've just heard a lot of good things about this book. I know that it has some trigger warnings, uh, so I would look those up before you choose to purchase this one, but I've heard that it's fantastic. So I'm really excited. Thank you so much, Casey. Let's open the last box. I don't know why I did this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I did this. I need to know who chose this one. <laughs> Oh, I think I had a moment of weakness potentially uh, when I added this to my wish list. Maybe not though, because I, j hmm. I chose it because I'm pretty sure that, wait, I'm pretty sure that this book just has enemies to lovers and that's that's ultimately why I put it on my wish list because I like enemies to lovers. <laughs> the book is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. <laughs> I don't really know what it's about and I don't really know if I would like it. And it says, Jude was seven when her parents were murdered and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live with the treacherous high court of fairy. 10 years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong there despite her mortality but many of the Fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardin, the wickedest son of the High King. To win a place at court, she must defy him and face the consequences. As Jude becomes more deeply embroiled in palace intrigues and deceptions, she discovers her own capacity for trickery and bloodshed. But as betrayal threatens to, to drown the courts of fairy in violence, Jude will need to risk her life in a dangerous alliance to save her sisters and fairy itself. I mean, like, it sounds pretty interesting. Oh, and the, the cover's really pretty. It has a little, like, crown with some, like, flowers and vines and thorns growing out, out of it. I want your guys' opinion. Do you think I'm gonna like this? Let me know. Let me know below. Um, regardless, it doesn't sound like I wouldn't like it. It's from Cecilia Montgomery and she said, happy birthday Sid, I'm a new subscriber. I love your personality and the content you create. This is one of my favorites. Yay, okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you chose it because it's one of your favorites because that makes me excited. <laughs> okay, we're gonna open the last one. This one feels like there's two in here, which is absurd, but we're gonna open it. This one's also from Aaron, but I think it's a different Aaron. <laughs> So Aaron said, birthday and new housewarming gift. Happy you're getting off night shift. Need you to get around to these to know if they're worth reading from Aaron Peterson. Okay, let's see. Let's see what you chose. Ooh. Oh, and she said, happy book day on your no book ban. <laughs> oh my God, yay. Oh my God. <laughs> she chose The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. 
I mean, you guys all know. Everyone's everyone's been reading this book. Um, ugh, I love a good romance paperback. It's like my fave. This one is, when a fake relationship between scientists meets the irresistible force of attraction, it throws one woman's carefully calculated theories on love into chaos. As a third year PhD candidate, Olive Smith doesn't believe in lasting romantic relationships, but her best friend does, and that's what got her into the situation. Convincing on that Olive is dating and well on her way to happily ever after was always going to take more than hand wavy Jedi mind tricks. Scientists require proof. So like any self-respecting biologist, Olive panics and kisses the first man she sees. That man is none other than Adam Carlson, a young hotshot professor and well-known ass. <laughs> Which is why Olive is positively floored when Stanford's reigning lab tyrant agrees to take her charade a secret and be her fake boyfriend. And when the big science conference goes haywire, putting Olive's career on the Bunsen burner, Adam surprises her again with his unyielding support and even more unyielding six-pack abs. <laughs> Suddenly, their little experiment feels dangerously close to combustion, and Olive discovers that the only thing more complicated than a hypothesis on love is putting her own heart under the microscope. Everyone's been ranting and raving about this book, so I just needed to see what all the fuss is about and try it out for myself. And then the other one she chose for me was, I don't know why it's shrink-wrapped, <laughs> was It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is my second Colleen Hoover book. I haven't read the other one, I have Verity, but here is It Ends With Us. I think that this is like one of the more iconic ones. I mean, Verity is too, I think, but I see this cover everywhere. And this is a good feeling book too. It's a little less floppy, but like it has a good, a good page page flip thing, you know? But anyways, <laughs> this one says, sometimes the one who loves you is the one who hurts you the most. Lily hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She comes a long way from the small town in Maine, oh my God, I love Maine, where she grew up, she graduated from college, moved to Boston and started her own business. So when she feels a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon, oh my God, named Ryle Kinsa Kincaid, Ra Ryle. Everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. Ryle is assertive, stubborn, maybe even a little arrogant. Every neurosurgeon is arrogant. He is also sensitive, brilliant, and has a total soft spot for Lily, but Ryle's complete aversion to relationships is disturbing. As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do thoughts of Atlas Corrigan, her first love and a link to the past she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. When Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Ryle is threatened. I mean, okay, it talks about, I mean, I love the East Coast and I also, you know, I'm a neuro ICU nurse. So like I deal with the neurosurgeons on the regular and I love neuro things. So that's really cool. That's really awesome. Um, and I mean, Colleen Hoover is one of those authors that super popular. I just haven't gotten around to any of her works yet. So this is awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's so many good books here. Thank you guys so much. It means the absolute world. I do know that I am going to go to Barnes and Noble here in a little bit, not today, in like the next couple of weeks because I got a gift card from Chloe, one of my other patrons. She sent me a $30 gift card to Barnes and Noble. So thank you, Chloe, so much. You're an absolute angel. And I got a gift card from Caleb's aunt and uncle. So I will be hitting up Barnes and Noble in a couple weeks and I might put that in one of my vlogs for December. So keep a lookout for that. But yes, thank you guys so much. This is an absolute honor knowing that you thought of and were able to send me a gift for my birthday. It, it, mean, it means the world. And just all the birthday wishes. That is more than enough as well. So this is an amazing little stack. Look at it. Look at it. Wow. <laughs> but that's all I have for you today. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. If you are still watching, then leave the little party guy emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe, like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.